Welcome back, guys. This is Wolfire Studios, and I hope you are all doing okay. This is the continuation of the last devlog, and I have added some stuff as expected, but I've also improved some stuff. Okay, so let me just quickly sum it up. What all I've added? I've added a reticle on my one x one x scope. That is the holographic, the canted, and the red dot. I have added some reticles on them. And I have improved these meshes of ACOG and Leopold. Basically, I have made them made the lens part, as you can see, the front circle circular part. I have deleted these meshes, deleted these particular faces, and re-imported them. And other than that, I have added a basic firing logic, and I have also added a, a good improvement logic for canted side. And yeah, that's all. Let me just quickly demo it all to you quickly. Yeah, so what happened okay so this is weapons way if you remember now if i have fire i can right now it is set to full auto so i can just spray and pray simple but if i press b it will be set to none if i press b again it will be set to single fire so i can only single fire as you can see if i press b again it will be uh, set to semi or burst and burst is technically three shots per second basically three shots in one go so if I press my left mouse button, see, I'll have to wait for a particular time. That particular time is the rate of fire of this gun. So I'll have to wait only then I can shoot again. Three, three and three, as you can see. And other than that, let me quickly show you guys the reticles I've added. So if I press Q, I can spawn my holographic and there it is a reticle. It is glowing. It is very bright and yeah. It works the way it should be. Yeah, and I can press Q again to spawn red dot. And the reticle is again emissive. And I can get my holographic. As you can see, I'm not zooming right before the holographic now. I'm zooming in front of the holographic. And same is with this Leopold. Both of them are having a different FOV value, but yeah, both of them are doing the same thing. And I can get back to Iron Sight again. Now, the code about Canted Sight. If I just press 6, I can spawn the Canted Sight, but I cannot use it. If I want to use the Canted Sight, I'll have to press T, which will rotate my spine. So, as you can see, I have rotated my spine and I can now use Canted Sight. Easy. And just to prove it to you guys, yes, I am rotating, as you can see. I'm rotating my spine, which is for real. And yeah, I can, I know I can use this code to implement peeking, peeking through corners like um, this. I can use this code to peek through corners. Yes, I can. I will implement it later. And yeah, that's all. Let me just quickly show you guys the code behind it. This is the firing code. So we are checking that we can fire or cannot. If we can fire, then we'll get the firing mode from the weapon. This is a variable in the weapon. And then we are just simply doing a line trace. Where we are doing the line trace from? If we are doing it from the socket, the active socket, the current active socket, it could be the ACOG one holographic, whichever socket is active. And then we are using the rotation and getting a forward vector and multiplying it this line trace multiplier as you can see it is a local variable and we are doing a line trace and yeah that's all we are just firing so as you can see this is the simple uh, single firing code this is the burst firing code i know it's not the perfect one basically i'm doing the same thing three times and then using stop firing i know i can run a loop or something on three you know, three times basically, but it's, it was not working for me somehow. So I'll have to find another way of doing it three times and not doing it this way. And this is the full auto. We are just checking. Can we fire? Like basically, are we pressing left click? If we can fire, then okay, we'll fire. We'll wait for a, uh, I don't know, fraction of a second because rate of fire is very high in M4. So we'll wait for that and then we'll stop it. And we are getting the fire rate from the weapon again. And we are dividing it by 60 because delay is just 60 divided by RPM uh, rounds per minute. This is the switching code. Again, it is very similar to the optics switching code. We are just running a switch on enum and then we are setting it to the next one and we are printing it. Simple as that. This is the code for switching optics, guys. As you can see, I have improved it. 
I'm just pressing Q and it is again switching the variable to the next one calling this variable from uh, calling this function from the interface setting this variable so that it can be used by the uh, weapon here and then we are just update calling this function which is updating the socket and then we are also along with that disabling this variable let me show you guys what this variable does this variable is our switching variable it will be used in the anim blueprint to switch the rotation of our bone so this is the switching between cantit function basically we are pressing t and we are checking are we doing ads if we are not doing ads only then we can switch to cantit side if we are already switched to cantit side then we'll disable it we'll tell the weapon whichever optic we were using we'll print that and then we'll update the socket so basically as if you guys remember by pressing t i can here suppose if i have cantit side i'm in holographic right but if i press t i'll be using cantit but if i press t again I'll be using holographic so this is the code like it is switching between that and I've improved this function in my blueprint of the weapon attaching canted now it has a boolean as you can see a boolean and what this does is it will just check run a branch on this boolean and it will check if we want to switch socket like if it if this value is true we'll set the socket to canted one else we'll set it to the whatever the active socket was and yeah that's it as you can see, pressing six will just spawn the canted site, but won't switch the sockets. So this is the conclusion of this character right now. Let me just show you guys the update weapon function. So right now it is not doing what it was doing in the last devlog. If you guys remember, I had child blueprints set up here, right? Child actors. So I've deleted all of them because well, they were causing a lot of issues related to collisions again. So I've gone with the simple classic approach of attaching them. To the socket so let me just open one of these functions spawn holo what will it does is it will check that this variable holo reference holographic optic reference if it is valid then okay we will unhide it but if it is not valid then again simply we'll just spawn it we'll attach it to the socket and yeah that's all and we'll disable the collision basically what we are doing is if this holographic is already existing in the game world we want to just unhide it why because this function is continuously playing this is the remove optic function it will run a switch on enum and it will check whichever optic we are talking about if we are talking about iron sight we want to hide every other socket right so sorry every other optic right so it will hide that it will check is holographic valid very good if it is then hide it if it is not valid then move on is red dot valid okay if it is then hide it if it is not then move on and yeah same the same logic like if we are on holographic then we want to hide the other three if we are on red dot then we want to hide the other three and so on and so forth you get the point right it is just checking the validity and hiding it and unhiding it respectively this is the unhiding code to be precise and yeah again we are just setting the active socket but right now i have a new variable as you can see the fov because I realized I won't be able to use screen capture component 2D because it was very performance intensive, guys. Very performance intensive. So I went on to camera manager. If you guys remember this, I was using the weapon to get the active socket, right? Now I am also using the weapon to get this variable, the FOV, and lerping it between 90 and the set value. And this set value is here. It is for the 1x scope, it is 80 as usual. But for the magnifying scopes, it is 50 and 40 respectively. So that is why you saw that ACOG and red dot have the same, but a sorry, holographic and red dot have the same, but ACOG and Leopold are just zooming in simply. The, all of these sockets are present on the weapon skeleton. And this is the anim blueprint. This is the code for canted site. As you can see, the previous code is here and I'm just saving it as a pose and I'm using that saved pose here running a switch on boolean and if the boolean is true we are set we are rotating our spine if it is false then we are not rotating it we are just putting it back to zero and these are the rotations that i found are perfect and this is the boolean this boolean is again here as you can see being received from the player variable the simple simple stuff and yeah quickly guys let me just show you the reticle as you can see Here's the reticle. It is a very simple static mesh that has this material on it. Which material? 
Um, let me just quickly find it. Where is it? Yeah, this material. It is a very simple material, guys. It is just using, as you can see, there is depth in it, right? It is using depth bump offset on its own texture. And we are using this three vector to get the color and using a multiplier scalable vector to uh, make it more emissive. It is a translucent material and unlit, as you can see. This texture is very simple. It is just white and black. If I can get it here. Yeah. As you can see, it is a very simple texture. The rest of it is just transparent and this part is white. So basically, we are using the opacity, the alpha of this. Alpha is zero for black and one for white, I guess, something like that. And we are just blending it and using that particular alpha to give it the emissivity, as you can see. And that's why this holographic reticle has this, you know, movement in it. As you can see, it has a depth in it as it's, it's, it's like, you know, it is being projected onto a screen or something. That is what it is. And yeah, that, that's all guys. That's all I guess. Yeah, this is the ACOG. I was using the screen capture component 2D for my ACOG and Leopold, but they were way too performance intensive as I just told you guys. So what I did. I just re-imported these meshes, as you can see, they are see-through because that's how materials are. They are not two-sided by default. Will you just stay in one place? Yeah, thank you. As you can see, it is not two-sided. So I have to use this particular static mesh to hide here, as you can see. And I'm zooming in and this socket is right, right in front of the ACOG site. That's why we are just zooming past through it. And yeah, that's all guys. That's all I have covered the new optics code. I have covered the firing logic. I have covered the reticles and I've also covered the candid side rotation that I just did. And yeah, that's it. That's all guys. In the next one, I'll, I'll be doing the recoil pattern, I guess, hopefully. And if not recoil pattern, then I'll be doing something with the user interface to get the ACOG and Leopold scopes look good. And after that, I'll be moving on to meta humans, I guess. So yeah, that's all guys. That's all. Um, yeah, I know this also isn't very dense, but I don't want the video to be too long or to be too short. So I just try to make a video when I feel I have done enough. And yeah, that's all. This is the controller. I'll be using this for user interface. It's firing logic, canted site. Yeah, it's all, it's all fine. So yeah, that's all guys. See you in the next one. Take care. Cheers.